Playing a Sony exclusive game with an Xbox controller on a Mac, what could be more perfect than that? So Ghost of Tsushima is finally playable on the Mac. Previously, when you try to run this game through the crossover translation layer, it would give the error message, this game requires a CPU that supports F16C instructions. And if you didn't already know, F16C is an x86 CPU instruction set that the Mac's ARM CPU doesn't support. However, it turns out that the F16C instructions are not a hard requirement for the game to launch, and this pop-up error has now been bypassed thanks to the patch provided by the user Vlad Vladimir Prog. And the same user also provided the F16C fix that plagued Horizon Forbidden West that works in a very similar way. And the best thing is that both files can be downloaded right now and work with the latest Steam versions of both games at the time of recording. No downgrading is required. So today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to get the game Ghost of Tsushima working on Apple Silicon hardware and also see how it performs on a variety of Macs all the way from the lowly base M1 chip to the mighty M3 Macs. But before we do that, we should be making sure that our Mac is running at peak performance. Big AAA Windows games like Ghost of Tsushima use over 75 gigabytes of space. And so you really need to clean up your Mac in order to get the best performance. And that's why I'm excited to show you the sponsor of today's video, Clean My Mac X. Simply speaking, what Clean My Mac X can do is very powerful, but amazingly simple to use. The app can find all sorts of hidden system junk, including caches, logs, and old Xcode installs. And Space Lens allows you to analyze your Mac's disk space, showing you where the biggest games and files are located on your Mac so you can make space for the next great game. It also has a fantastic optimization tool showing you all the login items and launch agents like leftover game launchers, which are all taking up resources every time your Mac is turned on. Clean My Mac X also has an excellent uninstalling utility, which allows you to not only remove applications, but all of their associated plists, option files, and caches. And it also features a powerful updater, which doesn't just work for apps from the App Store, but also works on third-party games and even emulators too. And one of the best features about Clean My Mac X is the menu app. This app shortcut lives at the top of the menu bar, so it's always easily accessible. You can see your memory, battery health, CPU load, and you can even perform a network speed test all from the comfort of this menu app. So make sure to click the link at the top of the video description to get a seven day free trial and use my promo code Andrew Tai to get a fantastic 20% discount. So Ghost of Tsushima is definitely one of the best looking games that you can play through crossover and game porting toolkit on the Mac and it looks absolutely amazing. Now this is a Windows port from the PS5 original which is at the time of recording about four years old now but it still manages to look fantastic. If you have a capable enough Apple Silicon Mac then you're not going to notice any kind of significant stuttering or performance issues. So in order to get this working I'm assuming that you have Crossover 24 installed on macOS Sequoia. If you didn't already make sure to click on the link at the top of the video description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. We also need to have the latest version of Crossover and also ideally CX Patcher as well. If you want to follow a tutorial video on how to do this then make sure to click on the link in the description. So once we have everything ready as normal we have the Windows version of Steam loaded up, we have Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut Down loaded and installed. So once you try to launch the game it's going to say this game requires a CPU that supports F16C instructions. So what we're going to do is to fix this issue so we can run this on a Mac. So what we're going to do is follow the link in the description for this PC gaming wiki file. So basically this is a patch provided by the user Vladimir Prog and what it does is that it bypasses the error by patching out the F16C requirement so that we can actually run the game and the instructions are all written here I'm just going to demonstrate how to do them. Before we do that I do recommend taking a look at Vladimir Prog's PayPal and donation pages. Making these patches takes a lot of time and Vladimir Prog's been working on this one for months. If this does work for you then make sure to show some appreciation and throw a few dollars his way. So the first thing that we need to do is to download the exe file. So we're going to agree to the terms and agree to download and then we're going to download this patch. So this comes as a zip file, press save and then we're going to go ahead and navigate to finder. Then we're going to go to downloads and we're going to find the file that we just downloaded. So what we're going to do is double click on the zip file and it's going to ask for a password. So the password's written here, it's pcgw lowercase PC Gaming Wiki, press OK and then this is going to go ahead and extract. So we have our exe file here. So what we're going to do is control click and then press copy and then what we're going to do is to navigate navigate to our file where Ghost of Tsushima is actually installed. So by default, if we go to crossover and then we control click on our bottle, open C drive, then you'll find this folder structure here. Then by default, it's going to be kept in program files under Steam. And then we'll go down to Steam apps, common, 
And then by default, it should be located in Ghost of Tsushima here. Mine's actually located in a different place. This is the full name, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, double click. And then you'll know you're in the right place because we have the Ghost of Tsushima.exe here. So what I'm gonna do is control click on a blank space here and then paste that patch file. And then we have the patched version here. And what we wanna do is to rename the original version. So I'm gonna click on this again, click on the end, then type in underscore orig for original, and then that renames that. So that file is not gonna be launched. And then what we're gonna do with this patch file here is I wanna replace that original exe file. So just rename that to go to sushima.exe. And now when we press the play button on the Windows version of Steam, it's gonna launch that F16C patched version instead. So we shouldn't get that error message anymore. So I'm gonna press play now, and then this is gonna start launching. So don't worry about this program error for the launcher, just close that. This is gonna launch correctly without the F16C error message. So here the launcher has come up and we have the option here to tweak some graphics options. Here, for example, I'm gonna set the preset to medium and we're gonna change the graphic settings here. I'm gonna turn VSync off. We're gonna turn the dynamic resolution Resolution scaling to 120. What I want to do is turn on AMD FSR. We're going to set this to quality mode and we're going to set the graphics settings to the preset of medium and then we're going to see how this runs. So press OK and then press play. So here I've got my controller and I'm going to be controlling the game using this Xbox controller which is already paired up via Bluetooth here. So here on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip, we're getting a very decent frame rate. We're setting this at 1080p on medium with FSR set to quality mode and frame generation is off. And although it was one-to-one -one boss fights or open world gameplay against multiple enemies, the fact that this game is being played through multiple translation layers didn't seem to make a huge difference to the actual feel of the game. I was able to execute all of the attacks and parries and dodges and the game felt very responsive. I also tested this game out on a couple of other machines Machines, including my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Here running at identical settings and we're getting roughly around half the frame rate of the M3 Max chip, which isn't too bad. Basically, I think if you want to play this game on a Mac, you probably want the M2 Pro or minimum with enough RAM to be able to handle this game. And don't do what I try to do, which is to run this on a MacBook Air with the M1 chip and only eight gigabytes of RAM. The game Steam page does say that the minimum requirement is 16 gigabytes. And if we do try to run this on only eight gigabytes, remember that this is actually shared between the game, the Mac operating system, System and also video memory as well. It might look kind of playable at the beginning, but it's gonna get bogged down by swap. And we start to head into single digit frame rate territory. Even if I turn it down to 720p, at the very lower settings, it's still not able to run this game. So here we also have footage donated kindly by the patches creator Vladimir Prog running this on the M1 Pro. Dynamic resolution scaling is set to target 30 FPS and it seems to be doing an okay job getting this to run. However, there are significant graphical artifacts to do with face rendering. So we hypothesize that this might be something to do with the M1 generation of chips not being able to render it correctly. However, personally, I haven't been able to recreate this issue myself. For example, I didn't have this problem on my M1 Max chip at all. However, you might have noticed that there are significant physics issues with the clothing and armor sets. On my M3 Max chip, it seemed to happen on some cutscenes. Most of them were not affected. It's slightly distracting and it's definitely a little bit immersion breaking, but it doesn't really have an effect on gameplay. So I don't consider it a huge deal. Hopefully it'll get fixed in the future. So anyway, that is my look at Ghost of Tsushima on the Mac. It's definitely one of the most impressive games that we can play through Game Porting Toolkit. If anyone's able to find a fix for those physics issues in the game, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.